It's almost like a sense of magic when you're there in that environment. So much of the natural side of Tassie is so untouched. It feels like a different planet. It's a place of isolation, whether it be geographically or socially. That's our battery, um, you know, just getting out there and immersing ourselves in it. There's something really recharging and inspiring about letting yourself exist in just that moment and then taking away those emotions and using that to create with. Hi, my name's Chloe. I'm Jack. We are Samna. So Sumna is my middle name. I was playing gigs for a few months under that name and I got pretty bored of just me and my guitar. We found each other on SoundCloud back in the day and I feel like we both were just really, really into what the other was making. Her SoundCloud was sick. She had from memory like a lot of self-produced lush demos. At that time I had like crappy as beats as a young like high school kid because that's just what I love to do in my spare time. I could tell that he had a keen ear and feel for rhythm. There was an intensity to the beats that Jack were making that I felt would go really like hand in hand with what I was creating at the time. I was just like struck by, you know, your voice, but also it was more bigger picture as far as like, how does this fit into a really lush, like sonic landscape? And it's not just the music as a backing for the voice. It's like a whole package together. And I think you've always been about that since. It just flowed really naturally. You know, we were just completely on the same page from day one, as far as like what sounds we wanted to create, what resonated, we never really sat down to kind of have this conversation of, you know, how we wanted things to sound. We kind of just, it felt really intuitive in the sense that we just started making stuff and just haven't stopped since. Jack and I riding together, it always kind of feels like two brains are coming together as one. I'll make the beats a lot of the time, but sometimes Chloe's producing. Chloe writes the vocals and lyrics a lot of the time, but sometimes I'll contribute melodies and lyrics. So we really like to share those roles and just like make it a, a true collaboration in that sense. Lately, the process has been working with guide vocals. So often without Chloe even hearing the beat, we'll like get on the mic with like a bunch of auto-tune reverb, just like a really nice vocal tone and just start singing. So that's the way that we come up with melodies in terms of stuff that is really intuitive. It just like comes off the cuff straight away. And then we'll go back and we'll edit it and we'll come up with a perfect structure as far as how that song should play out. We played this show in Forth, which is a tiny little town in Tasmania. And of all places, this was where Pinau came to play a headline set. And they asked us to support. About 5,000 people showed up. Yeah, it was massive. The guys from Pinau came out and, and like watched our support slot before their set. After the show, enjoyed a bit of a, a few bottles of sparkling with them <laughs> and, and got conceptualizing and stuff. And then it was probably only a few days later we actually got on a plane to Sydney. Um, very impromptu studio session. We wrote Stranded and South. Being signed to Nick and Peter's label, Lab 78, last year allowed us to really step up with our creativity and what we were able to put out into the world. Jack and I spend a lot of time obviously creating by ourselves and then we come together with Nick and Peter and we create and we've just all got so much that we want to say and so much that we're all so passionate about and excited about. And when you put that much energy in a room at once, like I think something great's bound to happen because that's that big ball of energy just sitting there like waiting to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Triple J unearthed. Feature artists. Hey, I'm Chloe. I'm Jack. And we're from Sumner. We're from Tassie, and we are your Triple J Unearthed Feature Artist for this week. So we have this track called Put It Out, and we released it at the end of 2018. And it got picked up quite, at that time for us, quite well on Unearthed and Triple J and stuff. And it felt like, it felt like then we had momentum and the ball was starting to roll. And then I had my first seizure. 
At some point, I remember receiving a call from Chloe being like, um, I don't know what the fuck's happened, but I'm in the hospital and, you know, I've, I've just had a seizure. You know, everyone's got things and, and conditions and stuff and makes life difficult for everyone, but yet um, I have epilepsy. It ended up being like 20 to 30 seizures in like a month. I'd never had them before and then they all just happened at once. And it happened right at this time where, you know, we'd just won the Triple J contest to play at Falls. A lot of things were kind of starting to happen for us. And then I literally just, you know, fell apart. My short term memory was shot. Like I'd say the same thing like, you know, three or four times in five minutes. I was twitching a lot. I didn't have the same feeling in my fingers and stuff like that. So I couldn't really play my instruments properly. Talking and speaking was difficult in itself. Then having to try and sing and remember song lyrics. It was this whole new set of challenges that I'd always, I'd never considered like because I'd always taken my able-bodiedness for granted. And it probably couldn't have been a worse time for us because we were starting to get some really good traction. And I really put the brakes on that. In order to be able to play shows in that capacity, it takes so much more rehearsing than I'd ever done. And that was more so a lot of rehearsing in my own time, simply that, so that I could like remember half an hour's worth of lyrics and melodies and stuff like that. I had some exercises that I had to do to get my hands moving better and containing twitches and stuff like that. A lot of cues that I would need, like in our, in our in-ear feed, I'd need Jack to give me a lot of like counting me down into the verse and stuff like that because I just wasn't really capable of retaining that information. It does take a village. It takes everyone around you kind of propping you up. I don't want anyone to carry me. I don't want to feel like a burden or that, you know, that I have to be like wrapped in cotton wool because I have these needs. It can definitely be a big challenge. It also doesn't have to be. The people close to me, like my partner and my family and stuff, like they just really held me together during that time. I'm really lucky that everyone in the team was so supportive that, you know, everyone was really there for me and really catered for what I needed, but the healing time and the recovery time on, on that kind of strain on your brain is long. It's extensive. You know, if we've got anything in the works, like we're, we're just gonna have to postpone things in order to make sure Chloe gets back to her full health again. But it's a it's a no-brainer. It's something that we, we have to do. You know, it's, it's become quite natural now. It's just like part of what we do and um, it's part of who Chloe is and we just work with that. One of the major ways that it's shaped our project is definitely the live show. Obviously there's, there's no strobes, stuff like that. As a dance act, that's just such a unique position to be in. But we really choose to just embrace that as a limitation creatively and just find other ways of making the live show slap. And yeah, it's still gonna be a lit time regardless. Makes me feel good because it's a more inclusive space for everyone to enjoy the show without stressing because I know that a majority of the acts have these just blinding strobes that make people without epilepsy feel a bit odd. <laughs> That's work, bro. That was good fun, yeah. I think the biggest thing that I would want to change is the acceptance of rest and the need for rest and not viewing someone as being lazy just because they're exhausted and they need to take a break, you know. Everyone's so different, their capabilities and workloads and what they can take on so different. You know, just because someone's not working 18 hours a day, seven days a week, it doesn't mean that they're not grinding and hustling in their own way. I think everyone has this expectation that you've got to work 24-7, 365 and that's the only way you're going to make it. But it's just not physically possible for everyone to work like that. And it doesn't mean that anyone should miss out on opportunities just because, you know, they can't put in that amount of time that's expected. I love performing to crowds, I'm not gonna lie. You can't compete with that kind of interaction, you know? Like, that's a group of people that are there giving you all of them and in exchange, Jack and I are up there giving all of us, you know? Everyone, regardless of what your physical ability is, what you look like, what you're into, whatever, that doesn't change your ability to relate to music. And that should be the crux of it at the end of the day. Whether there's 10 people or 10,000 people, we're still gonna like present the same energy and you know go in it with the, the same intentions to just like connect with our audience. There's so much pent up energy like within people at the moment, obviously like 
COVID stuff. Mm. And I feel like dance music is like the perfect auditory expression of energy. Mm. And so as soon as you get like that physical energy, the people in the room, and then you're playing this, you know, fast paced energetic music, it's just like this explosion. I think that's what's been the most inspiring thing behind creating, you know, house, dance, electronic music. You just watch people come alive. We've been through a lot to get where we are now and we don't have any intention of slowing down. So we're just gonna keep taking it further and just make absolute bangers.